Good morning. Good morning to the congregation. Good morning to the online listener. What a wonderful day it is to be in the house of the Lord. As the choir sings, please just stand. And if you feel like raising your arms up to the Lord, the Bible says to praise him in word, in action, in voice, in singing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We thank God that we are able to raise our arms this morning. I think about a young man that had no arms or legs. This is true. And he still praised God. But we got arms this morning. Legs, eyes to see. Oh, what a blessing it is this morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice in it. Rejoice while you can. Serve him while you can. Oh, what a great God. Praise the Lord. Just, just think about him for a minute. Think about the goodness. Oh, think about how good God has been to you and all the things that God has done for you and for me. Oh, praise the Lord. of God. We have come this far by faith. Oh, yes, oh, yes we have. Yes. It is that faith that the dark ages has taught us and the hope that the present has brought us. Praise the Lord for this morning. We have a beautiful service lined out for you this morning. Uh, this is our first Sunday for Black History Month. This month is celebrated all four Sundays in this church. It was Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history, who first set out in 1926 to designate a time to promote education about people and black history in our culture. Just want to say a little bit about it before we get started. It started out as Negro History Week. Uh, this morning, we are going to sing our national anthem, and that is hymn 591 if you have a praise book. Lift Every Voice and Scene was written by James Welton Johnson in 1921. It reminds us that we will march until victory is won. It is our cry for liberation and affirmation for an African-American people. Amen? Amen? Okay, let us stand and sing. Lift Every Voice and Sing, please.
Please be seated. As we sang this morning, as you think about the words this morning, lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of faith that the dark has taught us. And we have, we've been through a lot of darkness, haven't we, over the century. Uh -huh. So when we sing this song, you, you'll be able to feel some of the pains and some of the joys. Well, I can. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. We've come a pretty long ways. We're not quite there yet, but we still coming. There have been some progress. I just had to talk about that this morning because I've come a long ways from drinking at the colored fountain, from riding on the back of the bus. See, I don't have to read about it. I walked through it. So when, when I seen this song, it means something to me about the hope that the present has brought us because, see, that hope brought us. That's how we got this for. No matter what happened, we kept on hoping kept on praying, kept on shouting. <laughs> That's how you do it. You don't never give up. All right. This morning we're going to have the Old Testament lesson to be read by Miss Tanya Walker. Following her will be the gospel read by Miss Linda Glenn. And then I will have the morning prayer. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading, Genesis 15 and 1, 5 and 6, and 12 through 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. He brought him outside and said, look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to them, said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. Then the Lord said to Abram, Know this for certain, that your offspring shall be aliens in a land that is not theirs, and shall be slaves there, and they shall be oppressed for 400 years. But I will bring judgment on the nation that they serve. And afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. As for yourself, you shall go to your ancestors in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. Andrews Chapel. I'm reading Mark 15 verses 16 through 24. Please stand. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, with a reed spat on him, and knelt down to homage to him, in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his, clothes, his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. 
It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the palace called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. Both Luke and Matthew agree with Mark that the man was Simon of Cyrene. Mark wrote his gospel from what Peter taught and said until he was crucified in Rome. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for those words this morning of grace and mercy. Let us get ready for prayer this morning. I'm not sure what's on your mind this morning, other than being thankful this morning. Thankful that God woke you up this morning. Thankful that you had a man to even come to church. Because you know we got a little spoil being at home. I did, watching it on TV. It was almost the same, except we didn't have any fellowship. Didn't have any, but we still had the choir singing online, praise God. But this morning, I want you to believe that the same God that we read about in the Bible, the one that did the healing, you know, his body was there. His body isn't here this morning, but his spirit is. Is there anybody out there that needs some healing this morning? (laughs) Do you really need some healing? If you really need some healing, I challenge you this morning. Come up to the altar and stand and tell God what you want him to know. And ask God, what do you think about it, Lord? (laughs) Going through something that you don't like? Tell him about it. He'll listen. Isn't that right? You know about it. Right then. You know, sometimes I think about the old country churches where the sisters just be shouting. Amen. Every night then you have, you may have a little old lady. She'll take off and run around the church. I told somebody one time at church, I said, I feel like the old lady. I feel like running. They said, well, you are old lady. Go ahead and run. <laughs> All right, I just had to say it. But that's what they used to do. And then they'll start singing in the church. A person might start singing right here. Whether you could sing or not, then somebody pick up the hymn over there. And then somebody pick it up over there. Oh, that what happens in church. But now we have become almost a stiff congregation. We sophisticated. We too cute. Mm -hmm. But this morning, come on up. up. Is there some healing that you need? Do you want to walk right a little bit more than you've been walking? Come on up. I dare you to come up this morning. I dare you to come up and tell God and look for the healing. And then call me, email me, and tell me what God did. Come on up. It's free. It don't cost nothing to come up to this altar. Why you think we got one? Just to pass by and look at it? No, come on up here. Yes. Yes, yes. Good to see you. Reverend Jeremy. Yes, yes. Like they tell me, they say sometimes it's just good to be seen. (laughs) I know what I'm talking about. Good to be seen. I'm going to pray, Lord, for each and every one here, but I'm also going to be praying for the sick and shut in. 
And we got some. And I, I want you to pray in your heart that all these youth we got living in this community will come back to Andrew Chapel. Because, see, the youth are the ones that's going to carry on when old folks like me go on home. I pray I go on home one day. Isn't that right, baby? All right. Let us pray. Most gracious, most loving Father, the one that woke me up this morning, the one that woke you up this morning, the one that gave you the strength and the legs to walk from your car into the church. Oh, Lord, the one that kept us all night long. The one that made it possible for us to have food on our table. Oh, yes, Lord. A car to drive. If we don't have no car, we got legs. We got legs to walk. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We don't take nothing for granted. Lord, we thank you for our sound mind. I know some people who, man, is still here, but they don't remember their family members. But one thing I do know, God, that when I talk to those people, they still remember you. They'll tell you, the Lord is good and amazes me, Lord, that nothing can take away the mind of God in you. So if people with memory remember God, I know that we do, Lord, this morning. And so, Lord, we just want to say we remember everything you did all week. We remember when you, when you saw us get in our car, nobody tried to rob us. We remember when we got out of our car, nobody tried to rob us. We, we remember that our young black men that live at home with the parents, they still with them this morning and alive. Oh God, we, we, we know, Lord, that you blessed us. And there's no question, Lord, that you have not blessed us. But we just came this morning to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Feel in it. Feel that love and grace. Oh Lord. Thank you. Oh, mercy, Father. You're so good. Mmm. Mmm. My Lord. Oh, Lord. You've been so good. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Oh, you've been so good to us. And Lord, we just want to moan and groan and thank you. Oh, God. Ooh, hallelujah. Mmm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, the highest praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for you being, oh, Lord, you've been so good to us this morning. We just want to say, because mm, 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 mm. when you moan, God knows what you're moaning about. Mm -hmm. Where your sickness is this morning, moan about it. Heal us, God. Where's a, where is there's a lack of believing in ourselves that we can't do what we think we can't do, but we can't do it, Lord? Touch that person this morning. Touch that person that feel like they can't do this and they can't do that. Can't go to school. Can't do better. Let them know that you'll be with them. Lord, touch that person right now. Touch 
bless that person, Lord, that's going through some leg problems this morning, back problems. Touch those who are going through some mental illness problems this morning. Lord, talk to them this morning. Tell them that you love them so much, they're so important. Lord, tell them you, they're the apple of your eye this morning. Tell them those who uh, want husbands this morning to keep on praying for husbands to come. Those who want wives, even at any age, send husbands, send wives. Lord, touch the families, the young families that's having problems. Help them to stand, to stand with that husband and with that wife. Lord, I'm praying, Lord, for our black men in this community. I'm worried about them. Oh, we're worried about them. But Lord, mm, mm, oh, Lord. Lord, we really mean it. We really love you, Lord. Lord, look, look, look at us, Lord. Each one of us, Lord, I don't know what they're going through, but you know, Lord. You know. <laughs> Touch it, boy, one by one. There are some things that we can't even talk about to other people. But, Lord, we can talk to you about it because we're talking right now, Lord. Lord, do you hear us? We all got individual prayers that we're praying this morning. And Lord, we thank you. And Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that my sister, Minister Jackie, brought last Sunday. Oh, what a message. Thank you for her message last Sunday. Thank you for her spirit that she brought up in here. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for our pastor. Lord, I pray for Reverend Reed's father this morning. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch him. Touch his family. We need our pastor, Lord, strength. We need him. He's our shepherd here at this church, Lord. So, Lord, please take care of him and his wife. Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Will you bring the youth back? Need some help, Lord. On our fifth Sunday, Lord, bring the youth back. Bring them back on the fourth Sunday, Lord. Bring pastors, young pastors, back into this church. Bring them back. Because that devil can't have them. I don't care what they're going through. Bring them back, Lord. Oh, Lord, I petition you this morning, Lord. You say ask and you will receive. You say ask, you say just ask me and I'll do it. You said in John 14, 14. I'm going to rest on that first. God, this morning I say do it. Do it for us. Uh-huh. Jesus did it in the Bible. He's going to do it this morning right here. Go home and just wait on it. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I pray for those families who have lost ones in this church. Oh, God, they're going through this morning because, you know, Lord, we know we all got to leave here, but we just going to miss our loved ones. Lord, we can't help it. We're going to cry, but we know that they went on to heaven. Mm, just want to talk to you this morning. Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mercy, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Oh, 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 Lord. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, 
Yes, Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm. Oh, yes. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. It's so good to see everyone here as we have come into this house to worship him and magnify his name. Let's show some love to this choir this morning. Come on, come on, come on. We show love to them as we honor the Lord. Let's show some love to these musicians, this music team. Amen. We love you as we honor the Lord. Let's show some love to this worship leader as he's leading us. We honor you as we worship the Lord. We're so thankful today, as, as has been shared with us. You know that this is the first Sunday of uh, Black History Month. Um, do you know your ABCs? Everybody in here know they, your ABCs. It's not a trick question, really. But just in case, just in case you don't know all of your ABCs, we have a brief something I want to share with you this morning on the ABCs. Uh, there's a video we'll ask if they will, if the music and the, uh, the communications team would cue the video. And after we have learned a little something about our ABCs, then we'll come back and we're going to have an installation of our officers and the leadership team for 2023. Uh, friends, uh, let's turn the lights down. The ABCs of Black History Month. A is for Africa, the birthplace of humanity and civilization and the second largest continent in the world. B is for Barack Obama, the first African-American president of the United States. C is for the Civil Rights Act, the 1964 law which ended segregation in public places and employment discrimination on the basis of identity. D is for Dred Scott, an enslaved black man who unsuccessfully appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court for his freedom in 1857. E is for Emancipation. President Abe Lincoln freed millions of enslaved people when he issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863. F is for Freedom Riders, civil rights activists who took bus trips called Freedom Rides through the South in 1961 to protest segregated bus terminals. G is for the Greensboro Four, the North Carolina a and freshmen who sat at a whites-only lunch counter to protest segregation. Their actions sparked nationwide sit-ins. H is for the Harlem Renaissance, the intellectual, social, and artistic explosion that occurred in Harlem, other northern cities, and Paris that spanned the 1920s. I is for Ida B. Wells, a journalist and educator who fought against racism, lynching, and sexism. She was also one of the founders of the NAACP. J is for Jackie Robinson, the first African-American to play Major League Baseball in the modern era. He joined the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947. K is for Katherine Johnson, a mathematician at NASA whose calculations were critical to the success of the first U.S. manned space flight. L is for the Little Rock Nine, the nine students who integrated Little Rock Central High School in 1957 the U.S. Army protected the students from violence. M is for Martin Luther King Jr., the most prominent figure of the civil rights movement who led peaceful protests against racial and social inequality in America. N is for the NAACP, the civil rights organization founded in 1909 to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all people. O is for Oprah Winfrey, a media executive, philanthropist, actress, talk show host, TV producer, and North America's first black multi-billionaire. P is for Phyllis Wheatley, an enslaved West African who was sold to a family in Boston. She would become the first published black female poet. Q is for Lloyd Quarterman, one of the few black scientists to work on the Manhattan Project, a top secret effort to build the atomic bomb during World War II. R is for Rosa Parks, an activist who refused to give up her seat to a white rider on a segregated bus. This helped spark the Montgomery bus boycott. 
S is for Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman elected to Congress and the first woman to run for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination. T is for Thurgood Marshall, a lawyer who won several important cases before the Supreme Court before becoming the first black Supreme Court justice. U is for the Underground Railroad, a network of secret routes and safe houses used by enslaved people to escape to free states and Canada with the aid of allies. V is for the Voting Rights Act, the landmark piece of federal legislation enacted in 1965 to protect voting rights for racial minorities, especially in the South. W is for Wilma Rudolph, the athlete who overcame polio, racism, and sexism to become the first American woman to win three gold medals in a single Olympics. X is for Xavier University. Xavier University of Louisiana is a liberal arts college that is the only historically black Roman Catholic college institution in the U.S. Y is for York, an enslaved man who participated in the Lewis and Clark expedition across the western U.S. as an explorer and hunter. Z is for Zora Neale Hurston, an author, anthropologist, and a central figure of the Harlem Renaissance, whose work highlighted racial struggles in the South. Black history is American history. And the rest of that went, now I know my AB. We're going to have a pop quiz at the end of service, so make sure you have your, didn't you hate that in class when our ABCs of Black History Month? Friends, we are into the new year, and we have new leaders, new officers, new committee members to install. It is quite a list of people. We've tried to share that and disseminate the list and the names. Uh, since the time of charge conference. But today we want to invite all of our leaders, committee members, officers to come that we might have our installation. And so today, if you are an officer, administrative council chair, vice chair, if you are a trustee board member or chair of trustees, if you're on the SPRC or the chair of SPRC, if you are council and ministry coordinators or chairs, United Methodist women or men, and we're no longer the United Methodist women, we are the United Women of Faith. In faith, we're United Women in Faith. That's who we are. If you are an officer with them or officer, uh, I will invite all of you to come up at this time. Those that are present, please come. And I didn't try to call the entire list, but just a few. There's the finance department. There are counters. There are youth leaders and youth council. There are delegates to the annual conference and all alternate delegates. We have our share, our food ministry coordinator. All of these, if you are over the ushers as a president, we invite you to come. If you're a choir president, please come. The theme for Black History Month this year for 2023 is Black Resistance. We have come, I think there's a song that, uh, that we've been singing, we've come, you sang this morning, we come this far by faith. And that faith was not of ourselves, but leaning on the Lord. Friends, as we come this day, we recognize that God Amen. Come on up, Brother Jeff, and there are those with the communications ministry. We recognize that God has called you and you have been chosen by the people of God for leadership in the church. This ministry is a blessing and a serious responsibility. It recognizes your special gifts. 
it also recognizes that to be a leader or an officer or committee member in the church is a sacrifice. Make no mistake about it. It's a sacrifice of time. It's a sacrifice of your efforts. It's a sacrifice of your gift, gifts, and a sacrifice of yourself. We call, we recognize that you are called to work among us and for us. And therefore, in love, we, the members of this church, thank you for accepting this obligation. And we challenge you to offer your best to the Lord, to this congregation, and to the ministries that you represent here and that go forth from here around the world. Live a life in Christ. Be an example with each other and with the world. And make Christ known in your witness through your work. Today we install all of you as the leadership team of 2023. I ask you this day. Do you acknowledge yourself to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? If you are, you ought to say, I do. I do. Will you devote yourself to the service of God in the world? If so, say, I will. I will. will you so live that you will enable this church, Andrew's Chapel, to be a congregation of love and peace? Say, I will. Will you do all in your power to be responsible to the task and responsibilities for which you have been chosen? We also recognize that there are persons who have been elected to office by, for example, the United Women in Faith or the United Methodist Men and even among our youth. There may be even other organizations like the ushers or the choirs that select leaders from among themselves. We recognize all of you at this time. Therefore, people of God, let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Almighty God, pour out your blessings upon these your servants who have been given particular responsibilities and individual ministries in your church. Grant them grace to give themselves wholeheartedly to your service. Grant them patience to work patiently with those who sometimes may not follow as closely or as quickly as we desire. Keep before them the example of our Lord who did not think first of himself, but gave himself for us all. Let these who take on this responsibility this year, let them share their ministries, and oh God, we pray that you will consecrate them, that they may enter into this ministry with joy and excitement. Guide them in their work, oh God. Reward their faithfulness with the knowledge that through their work, your purposes are accomplished through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, we rejoice that God has blessed you and called you and will use you this year. You are the leaders of this church. Make no mistake about it. We are challenged like never before. Challenged because the church has been um, withdrawn perhaps. Challenged by COVID, we could not assemble. And now as we come out of COVID, half of those who said they believe do not want to assemble. It's not an easy task. Young folk don't want to worship with us old folk. Um, and some of us old folk don't want to worship with young folk. Yet we are all God's people. This challenge is not easy. But do your best. Give your best in service. And when you have given your best, know without a question, without a doubt, 
that God will say, well done. God bless you. May he keep you, and may his grace be upon you. Church, let's show these leaders our love. Leaders, would you turn and face the congregation? Brothers and sisters of Andrews Chapel, this is our leadership team for 2023. Put your hands together and give them a thunderous round of applause. Amen, amen, and amen. You may return to your seats. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you.
Yes, yes. David said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all, all, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. Who are we? We are his people the sheep of his pasture. Therefore, enter into his gates with solemnity. No, no, with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be sad, be down, no. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Not my name, not your name, his holy name. Why? For the Lord is good. Some of us say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. This is the word of God. For the people of God, thanks be to God. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. And we don't care about him or her. And whoever the devil is, God has a question this morning. Are you ready to give thanks? You have already answered his question this morning. You have answered it through your praise, answered it through your presence, answered it through your witness. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Oh God, now may the thoughts of our minds and may the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O 
O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Let the church say amen. amen. It is interesting that uh, it's not even a coincidence. It's just God at work. The scripture that the Spirit gave to me this morning to preach was the 100th Psalm. But I can't preach what you've already preached. Don't want to hear the sermon again. But I simply would remind us for a few moments, if you allow, on this first Sunday of Black History Month 2023, the theme this year has been selected nationally as black resistance. We have a heritage. We, are, we stand on a heritage of the faith of our ancestors. Ironically, if not very intentionally, when the choir sang their first selection, they gave us a medley of songs. Among them was a spiritual over my head. I hear music in the air. It was for our ancestors the recognition that God was ever present. It was that hope that they felt from the presence of God that sustained them in the deepest, darkest days of the terrors that our people suffered. Uh, I, I didn't say hardships. I did not say trials. Uh, intentionally, our people were terrorized for 400 years. Whether that were, was by the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan or whether that was by the John Birch Society, or whether that was just by Jim and Jane Crow and everyday racism, we were terrorized. Those spirituals connected them with the presence of God. Uh, all around the world, we are, are known. Our spirituals are known. It was when Natalie and I were in Italy, I was sitting at a table with a group of, of people from various places around the world, Spain and other places, and I was sitting there doing what I normally will do. A little song was in my mind, and I was humming, and as I was humming, uh, this woman of Spanish descent looked at me and said, Spiritual? We are known, our spirituals are known around the world. And on this first Sunday of Black History Month, we are reminded that despite the nearly three millennia that separate the Psalms of ancient Israel and the spirituals of the African American enslavement period, they are remarkably similar in that they both reflect their communities, similar milieus and emotions and convictions. The spirituals were akin to the Psalms in that both the Psalms and the spirituals express a deeply held, deeply rooted love for God and an urgent longing for his presence, his justice, and his judgment. It has been said that the songs that arose out of American enslavement of our African ancestors have preserved a poignant portrait of the hearts, the sufferings, the hopes and faith of our people and their anonymous composers. Frederick Douglass, whose writings and orations were some of the most eloquent and persuasive attacks against slavery, claimed that witnessing the enslaved slaved communities sing their spirituals was actually one of the most powerful arguments for the abolition of slavery. They sang over my head. I hear music in the air. 
I argue that the African-American spirituals are the psalms of a modern-day people of God. Unequivocally, they were the modern-day people of the book, our ancestors were, whose faith was so strong that it could not and would not be quenched or denied by the terrors and the racism and persecution that they experienced daily for over 400 years. And according to the videos that we just saw a couple of weeks ago with the murder of Tyree Nichols, they're still experienced today. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said, but those were black cops that beat him up. You, you fail to realize that there were, we always had some of us that were doing the bidding of our masters. They've always been, you, you know that the sheriff's patrols arose out of the, the need of southern slavers to keep our people oppressed, so they appointed patrollers, yeah. sheriffs, yeah. to roam the roads to make sure that none of our folk tried to escape. It is no secret that people here have always used indigenous folk to oppress other indigenous people. Yeah. The Calvaries of the Old West, when the armies went out, they often used Native American scouts to scout out their own people so that they could eradicate them. It is no different from using our own people as sheriffs and deputies to brutalize and control us. My, how things have changed, and yet so many things remain the same. Although for 400 years, time after time, their hopes were dashed to the ground, they were living proof that truth crushed to the ground will rise again. Whether they were picking cotton or working fields or, or whether they were nursing the children of old Massa and old Missus, they often sang out of the depths of their souls. You could hear them singing, go down, Moses. Go down to is Egypt land and tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. You could hear them singing, heaven, heaven. We know everybody talking about heaven ain't going to heaven. And although they were chained and beaten, still they would sing, didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? And they even sang, swing low. Sweet Jerry coming for to carry me home. And when they were tired of being enslaved and an old black Moses was nearby, sometimes they would sing, steal away. Yeah, yeah. Steal away to Jesus. They, they knew that God was on their side. They didn't know when, they didn't know how, they didn't know where, but they just had the faith that one day God would make a way out of no way. They had the faith that one day God would break the chains of the slavers that enslaved them. They had the faith that one day they too would be a free people again. It is no wonder, therefore, that this 100th Psalm became one of the favorites of our people and the favorites of Christians everywhere. I suspect most of us, I don't know about you, but I suspect most of us, if you were like me, we learned the 100th Psalm when we were little kids in the church. Could almost recite the whole thing by heart and make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. We all learned as, as children and it had become a favorite among us. Why such a favorite in a difficult and dangerous age? And make no mistake about it. 
Over this, the course of this month, I'll preach uh, again about the danger of where we are, the danger of now. For three years, for three years, we were not able to enter into the church building. For three years, Christians were cloistered at homes. We were live streaming services. For three years, we were not able to bow our knees at this altar. For three years, we did not hear the melodious sounds of a wonderful choir like this. For three years, sometimes all you heard was Pastor Reed talking about blessed assurance. And when I finished singing Blessed Assurance, I prayed. And when I finished praying, I'd go into another song. And when I finished that hymn, I'd go into a sermon. And when I finished that, I'd go into a prayer and a benediction. There were times when it was only Pastor Reed up in here, up in here. Don't you fool yourself. That was not easy. It's not easy to preach to empty pews. It's not easy to preach when the pews are full. It's not easy. Dangerous times. And now that we've begun to come out of it, it seems that all hell has broken loose in society. People are killing each other. You can't go to the grocery store without fear that some kind of hell might break loose. You can't go to the doctor's office. You can't, you're afraid to put your blinkers on and go around or pass anybody on the streets because you don't care, know what crazy person is in that car that might go road rage on you. Crazy days. Trying to come out of COVID and George Floyd is killed right before us just as calmly the devil knelt on his neck until the brother died and did not make a mumbling word, didn't get down to try to help him. We saw it all. And then again, the devil shows up and Tyree Nichols is beaten like a puppet. And when he is down, laying on the ground, telling him, lay down, what kind of hell is this that we are living in? We've come out of COVID and we can't get folk to come back to the church. But everybody's traveling, going, every dog going where they want to go. Folk are fussing and feuding and fighting about trying to get some Beyonce tickets. You'll pay a thousand dollars to get some doggone Beyonce tickets and show up at the church with three doggone dollars. The hell you say? Y'all ain't ready for this today. We are living in some particularly dangerous times when people are more willing to spend thousands of dollars on a concert but won't show up to give a few dollars to try to feed the hungry through the church. Won't show up to give a few dollars to try to minister to folk in need. Won't show up. Just won't even show up. We are, we are at risk when we go to the mall or stop for gas. We are at risk from those who want to overthrow the government and the nation because they feel threatened by our increasing numbers and their decreasing numbers. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, all we say is be true to what you said on paper. Somewhere, Martin said, somewhere I read, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Somewhere I read that the right of citizens of the United States who are 18 years of age or older to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state. Somewhere I read that no state is to deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. But Tyree didn't receive any protection. 
we are living in particularly difficult times. And I have this to say to those that think that if, we, if, if they could just make a little bit more money, they could feel secure. Some feel if I could just get a little bit more in my 401k, I'd feel all right. If I could just have a little bit more health coverage, I'll be okay. If I can just get my kids into school and get them educated, I'll be all right. Our young folk are thinking if I can just get this degree, if I can just get this promotion, if I can just get to the concert. They're thinking about concerts and some of some of us are thinking about going by the liquor store. You're not ready for this today. All we say is just be true to what you wrote on paper. Just be true to what you said you would do. It is patently obvious and plainly clear that we have a problem. Yet our problem is not as bad as that which our ancestors encountered. And yet they made it through. Yet they held on to God's hand. Yet they made 400 years. Yet. They kept hope alive. What is it they had that we don't have? Well, if you're looking for your answer in your 401k, you're not going to find security. If you're looking for an answer from the liquor store, that lightning in a bottle might warm you up one time, but it won't, it won't keep you when the, he, when the fires of hell are burning. I say that what we need is what our ancestors had. And, and they weren't fighting over whether we are young or old or what song we're going to sing. They were just glad. And you know how we know they were glad? They kept singing, I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to clothe me in my right mind. He didn't have to give me a little portion of health and strength, but he did. Oh, I'm glad. They understood something that we have forgotten. They understood that life is not about the titles that you bear or the money that you have or the house that you live in or the kind of automobile you drive. Those things are good. Jesus said, but doesn't God so clothe the sparrow of the field who neither works nor toils, but every time you see him, he looks as though he's just been dipped his wings in the morning dew and he shines and he flies and if God watches the flight of a little sparrow and if he sees when a sparrow falls then surely our ancestors understood it's not about any of those things because they didn't have those things they were singing i got a robe you got a robe all of god's when i get to heaven i'll put on my robe and i'll walk listen i'll shout all around i've got shoes you've got shoes they didn't even have shoes but they were singing about the shoes that they would have one day because their faith was that the God who is the covenant-making, covenant-keeping God will make a way out of no way. Somebody ought to say amen. That's why they loved the 100th Psalm. That Psalm said two things to them. That God is too good to come into his presence sadly and solemnly. Huh. Then somebody said, but, but pastor, what about Habakkuk? <laughs> Habakkuk says, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Most of you, some of you grew up as children in a Methodist church. I've always, I grew up, listen, I was a drug baby. I was drug. And you bet not say nothing either. 
And I recall, Dr. Pollard, I recall even as a child, worship would begin as the choir would sometimes sing. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. That's when worship started. And that didn't make sense to me for a while. Um, I've got a friend, uh, she was here, you remember when, when Judge Sonia Natasha Brown was here, when you go to her court, when she walks in the courtroom, a voice calls out, all rise, and people stand up and they keep quiet. They don't make a sound. She'll tell you, you bet, you bet turn your phone off right now and not make me have to come and get it. They say, all rise, and people get quiet. They stand up. Nobody makes a noise. Nobody makes a sound until she says, you may be seated. And when she says, you may be seated, then everybody can sit down, and then the proceedings of the court will begin. You got it, didn't you? When you come into the presence of the Lord God, who is the judge of all things, the maker of all things, the, the, the judge of all people, we come in reverent, silent, quiet faith and respect of God. We recognize he's God all by himself. We recognize God is sovereign. Beyond, beyond him, there is no other. We recognize that if God can't do it, it can't be done. We recognize that God woke us up. We recognize that God has all power. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. We are quiet because he is God. But then once God says it's time to worship, it's no longer time to sit back and fold our hands. It's not time for sitting there looking at your watch. It's not time for wondering when it's over. When God says it's time to worship, that's the time we open our mouth. That's the time we begin to praise him. That's the time we begin to sing. Our ancestors understood two things. First of all, God is a covenant-making, covenant-keeping God. That's why they could sing over my head. I hear music. I don't know when he's going to show up, but I know he's with me. He's a promise-keeping God. What God promised, he said, he will do. And they counted on that. Didn't know when, didn't know how. They knew the children, the Hebrew children, had gone through 400 years of slavery, but they knew one day God raised up a Moses and sent a Moses down to, down to, down to Egypt land and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. And didn't God work it out? He didn't have bombs and planes. He, he didn't have tanks and marines. All God had was some flies and some frogs and some gnats. And all God had was, was some water and some heat. All God had was nature. And with all of that, God led them to freedom. And when there was a Red Sea in front of them and mountains on either side and troops behind them, all God did was and the waters rolled up. Didn't they walk through on dry ground? No wonder Aretha could sing along with James Cleveland. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. And tell Martha not to mourn because Pharaoh's army has drowned it in the Red Sea. They had a faith that was based on the fact that God is an ever-present God. Therefore, they said, make a joyful noise before the Lord. When you read that word, Lord, go back and read it in Hebrew. You'll see that they use the word Yahweh. Yeah. 
Yahweh is the covenant-making, promise-keeping God. Yahweh, make a joyful noise before the one who said, Lo, I will be with you always. Make a joyful no noise before the one who says, Have you not heard? Have you not known? I am the everlasting God. But they also knew a second thing. Not only did they say make a joyful noise before the Lord, enter his gates with thanksgiving, come into his presence. For the Lord, he is good. When you read that word, the Lord, that word, the Lord, that Hebrew word, the Lord, it's not the same word Yahweh in that, in that next verse. It is the word Elohim. Man, you don't understand. For the Hebrew children, Elohim is God, but he is the other reflection of God. The way-making, all-powerful, the creator God. If there is no way, he'll make a way. The creator God, though you die, he'll make you alive again. The creator God, you're down, but he'll find a way to lift you up. The creator God, when they close a door, he'll open a window. The creator God, when they make laws against you, he'll destroy the laws. The creator God, when nobody's on your side, God is on your side. What we need in 2023 is what our ancestors had. Faith that God is with us and faith to know that God can do anything but fail. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. And that's why I used to hear the old preacher call out at the end of every sermon, He's able. And that said it all. What do you need? He's able. If you're sick, he's able to heal you. If there's no food on your table, he's able to put food on your table. If, there's, if, if you're just driving a hoopty, he's able to get that hoopty to get you where you need to go. He's able. That's why we could sing, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And so I say to us, as I open the doors of the church, as we go into 2023, Invite everyone you can and tell everybody you know God is the covenant-making, promise-keeping God, and we will worship him. God is the all-powerful, creative God, and we will serve him. And it does not matter whether you want to sing Kirk Franklin or we want to go back and sing James Cleveland. God doesn't care about the song. He cares about the praise in your heart. And so I invite you today. If you are ready to serve the Lord, I invite you to come forth. If you are ready to turn 2023 upside down, and understand the old, uh, the old markers that we used to use to identify whether we thought we were making progress or not, whether the church is full. You know, you always wanted a, a full church. Whether you have a lot of children, always want a lot of children. Uh, is anybody coming to the Lord? Are there any professions? Of those old markers, they don't work anymore. It's a new age. It's almost like we are right back in the early days of the church, just a few of God's, just a few of God's children gathered together to praise the Lord and serve him one more time. And I, I bet you, I promise you, if you will serve the Lord, if you'll come into his courts with thanksgiving and enter his presence with praise, I promise you, 
that he is good and that his mercy is everlasting, I promise you that he is a way maker, that if you need him, he'll make a way out of no way. I promise you, if cancer gets in your body, he'll still bring you through. I promise you that if COVID gets down in your chest, that he's able to put his arms around you and love you like a rock. I promise you that if our children won't do right, he'll go with them and he'll protect them if they'll just stay with him. I promise you that if we lose our minds and bump our heads, he'll hold on to us. Though we're trying to go to hell, he'll snatch us and pull us back. I promise you that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll make a way out of no way. Say yeah. I know the Lord. I know the Lord. We'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. They forgot that song. I know the Lord. We'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Oh. a way for you I know he will lead lead you safely through I know the Lord will make a way oh yes he will I have a savior I can tell all, all my troubles too, yeah, when I'm burdened and I don't know just what to do, i tell you what I do, I go to him to him in secret prayer I know I can leave 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 my burdens there I know the Lord will make a way oh yes he will oh yes he will doors are open. I know God will. If you, if you're uncertain about your eternity and where you will spend it, I invite you to make a decision to make God the head of your life today. Those of you are watching online, if you're uncertain, that if the Lord called you to stand before him in judgment tomorrow, if you're uncertain that he would say, stay with me forever, I invite you to give your life and your heart to him today. He will. He will. I know the Lord will make a way. Amen. If you, you may be seated. And I'd simply invite you right now to pray this prayer with me. If you, if you are uncertain that God would say to you, stay with me in my presence forever, then pray this prayer with me and accept Jesus as your Savior. God, I confess today that I'm unable to save myself. 
I've tried and tried. I've tried through good works and good deeds. I've tried by trying to live a good life. I've tried by trying to love my friends and family. But I now recognize that no amount of good things I do, not even giving, will buy salvation for me. I welcome you into my heart. Lord, forgive me of every sin. Cleanse my heart and take control of my life. And I thank you right now for dying for me and rising for my salvation. Thank you for giving me eternal life in that very moment. And Father, now I simply pray, use me, put me to work in your church, whether in stations out front where people will see me or whether in the background where no one knows what I do at all. Use me to bring glory and great honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer and you're present, then first I invite you to walk down the aisle and come to the altar right now if you're here. If you prayed that prayer and you're here, come. If you prayed that prayer and you're worshiping with us online, then go to our email or go to the telephone, call us, leave a message right now, email, text, social media, but contact us and let us know that you gave your heart to the Lord this day and we will connect you with this church or any other church so that you may serve the Lord in joy and gladness. Amen. Amen. Oh, he will make a way for you. He will lead, lead you safely through. I know the Lord will make a way. Choir, I thank you. You all set it off up in here, up in here. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Friends, thank you. Reverend Warren, thank you. Are you uh, joining us for communion? Now, you know you got to slip your robe on. you. Amen. Friends, uh, Dr. Pollard, Dr. Renwick, Darrell Pollard is with us and He's one of our retired United Methodist pastors. Pastor, we thank you for your presence. Do all of you have your communion cups, wafers, have they been distributed? If you don't have one, please lift your hand now that the ushers might come and bring one to you. There is a fountain. Well, let's sing, I know it was the blood. Would you do that for me? I know, I know.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and all who are in love and in peaceful relations with the neighbors. He invites to his table all who intend to lead a faithful life from now walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw now ye near with faith as we confess our sins before God and before one another. Reverend, would you lead us in our confession? Yes, yes ma'am. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. Now this is the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That alone proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks and, and praise. praise. Yes, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, who art the creator of heaven and earth. And so with the, your people and uh, here on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn, singing, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Yes, O oh God, you are holy. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. For by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On that Thursday night in which he was betrayed, Jesus came to that moment of the last meal. And there with his friends, he sat down and had supper. He took bread in his hands. He blessed it, then broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he held it up and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty gifts and this wonderful act given through Jesus Christ, we joyfully come into your presence seeking forgiveness of sin and giving thanks for the eternal life that you have given us. For we rejoice in the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh, pour out on these your gifts, these gifts of bread and wine, the Holy Spirit, and make them be for us the body of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Use us, O oh God, as we go wherever to be witnesses to the new life that you give us. And with the new life that you give us, may we live lives so that those around us will be drawn to you giving glory to the God that we serve. And therefore, let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Would you lead us? 
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from all things that is sin and evil. Power and glory forever. Amen. The body of Jesus Christ broken for you. Take now and eat this bread. It is the sign of his suffering and sacrifice for us. The blood of Jesus poured out on Calvary's mountain. Drink from this cup. This is the blood of the new covenant. It is the promise of eternal life. As we receive the bread and the juice, we receive the new life that Christ gives. With that new life given to you this day, go forth in new life and let your light shine so that men may see your good works and give glory to your God in heaven. Amen, amen, amen and amen. May we pray. Almighty and all wise and everlasting Father, because you have thought enough of us for another week and have blessed us financially during this week, we now bring and give back a portion to you that of what you have given us so that the portion that we give back to you, we ask that you increase it so it may be able to be a financial blessing for those who are going through some type of trial and tribulation. But this is our servant prayer we ask in your son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. I'm excited today to remind you or to share with some that we are starting uh, what we fondly call Reparathon 2023. I'm, I'm calling it a pep campaign. Pep. A pep campaign. Reparathon 2023. A property enhancement campaign and as we give we're going to do several things I'm since the, the hour is late I'll do it just a brief something about this but as you walk around the building as you walk around the campus you'll notice that there are things that need to be done work that needs to be done there's some painting and some touching up needed for here. Some windows need to be repaired. There's some major items, too, that we'll look around the educational building. We can tell that there are, are some places where there's some water damage and some stains, and, and all of those things take funds. As we come back into this building, there's only one restroom upstairs, and you know it's right here. And with our musicians in the corner, it's hard to get there. We simply know that we can't go on. We've got to do some things differently. And so Reparathon 2023 will begin to address several of the issues that we see. And uh, we want to invite you. Now, I think our goal is $50,000, but that's such a small goal. I was thinking we probably ought to raise that to $100,000, but I know somebody will be mad with me if I say that, so <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. 
<laughs> but our goal is 50,000. And there's much work that we need to do. Not just work, because the church is not a building. If the building falls to the ground, if a tornado hits it, we will still be the church called Andrew's Chapel because the church is not the building, it's us. But we want a building that will reflect the glory of God and God's blessings upon us. So we invite you to work with us to give. It's going, it is called Reparathon 2023. And so we want you, we invite you, we encourage you to help us reach our goal. I, I think I will share on next Sunday, I'm going to ask for a congregational meeting uh, somewhere after the middle of the month so that we can just go through this in detail so that you will know exactly what we're planning to do. But we need your generosity. We need your gifts, but we need your presence as well. The church is not the building, it's the people. And you know from today, something wonderful happens when all God's children get together. The Holy Spirit shows up. And when God shows up, you know what else. He's going to show out. Well, we thank you for your generosity. We'll share more and more. But Reparathon 2023 is underway today. We are going to be asking a certain amounts, and we'll share all of that as we go. And we'll send the emails and contact you this week to make sure everybody's informed. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Mr. Council Chair, is there anything else you would add to that? Uh, no. All right. We, we, we can start today with 300 a person. Be generous. You are going to see it everywhere around the building. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we've had a wonderful time. I'm, I'm just going to stop right here and say thank you to everyone, those who are worshipped, those online, everybody here. Our readers, thank you so much. I dearly, deeply appreciate it. Choir. God bless you and thank you. What a joy. What a joy. Um, Miss Angela Wall, could I see you before you leave? Miss Linda Glenn, I need to see you before you go. Uh, Brother Ira, uh, is that Brother Reed? Oh, there's some cards. What's, I can't see it. I'm in the light up here. We're updating our contact information. Please give us your, uh, you've, you've already done it before, but give it to us again. Address, email, cell, telephone number so that we'll be able to contact you. Amen? Amen. On fourth Sunday, we're going to celebrate Heritage Sunday. Let's stand. Uh, we're going to have a, a big meal after church. Uh, be here. On third Sunday, we'll be celebrating slot ministry after church. They're going to have a big reception for their slot uh, um, essay winners. And on next Sunday, we'll be right back here in worship and in praise. Reverend God bless you and thank you for leading us today. Let's receive this benediction now. Now unto him who is able to present us in his presence without blemish, without fault or failure. Now unto God, who is the creator of all things, the covenant-making, promise-keeping God. Now unto God, who is the all-powerful God, the Son, who died to give us salvation and rose to give us eternal life. Unto the Spirit, who is everywhere at the same time. Now unto God, be power, glory, honor, and dominion. Now, henceforth and forevermore. Let us all sing. Amen. 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 God bless you. And we will see you soon. 
Kathy Ford Lane. I need to see Kathy Lane. I need, is Rena here today? Let's keep Rena in our prayers. I, she is here.